What's up, everyone, and welcome to Sunday with Ola 20. What's up, everyone, and welcome to Sunday with Ola 79. Hope you guys are having a great Sunday so far. It's really early in the morning, and say hello to Team No Sleep in the chat. What's up? Hello. For you who don't know what Team No Sleep is, it's basically the guys that are in the other side of the world watching the premiere right now. You guys are awesome. Just saying. Are you guys ready for the news? No? Okay, here it is, anyways. I don't think it escaped anyone last week when we heard news about Taylor of Foo Fighters passing away at his hotel in Bogota. Uh, the Foo Fighters drummer Taylor, 50 years old, and he passed away way too soon, man. I mean, 50, that's 10 years from where I'm at at the moment right now, so it definitely makes you think. Some say he's kind of like the king of modern rock and roll drumming, and I sort of have to agree. I mean, the guys in Foo Fighters, they, they have a lot of energy as people, but I think he was one of the guys who were really on the same level as Dave Grohl when it comes to the, uh, you know, high energy level. It's really a tough blow for the metal community as well, not just the rock uh, community. It's a, it's a tough blow for the metal community as well. Also last week, Korn was shot. Someone shot at Korn's tour bus. A couple days ago in Iowa, we received a bullet to one of our buses in the middle of the night. No way on the bus, thank God. And the bullet didn't penetrate the interior of the bus. Well, we're back in Iowa and hoping for a better welcome tonight in Des Moines. Well, <laughs> man, is that Iowa right there shooting at the, the band's bus? How about bringing some Saturday night energy to Monday night concert for your boys? Well, that's very nice. Uh, look at this. Okay, I'm gonna write down in my notes. Iowa. Be careful. Okay. Lorna Shore made a live appearance. Uh, serious? Is it serious? It's very serious, everyone. Uh, no, the, the radio channel, serious. And uh, they made so, some sort of like a, you know, in studio live performance thing that you see nowadays, where they perform live in a studio with, you know, nice cameras. Much like what I'm doing right now. You know, many cameras. I'm sitting playing, I mean, they're standing and doing their shit. It's sort of like a live performance that almost becomes like a music video. It's to the song To The Hellfire. When they released this song, people went nuts, okay? And I was actually thinking that... Oh, Solar! There's a Solar in there. Uh, I was thinking of maybe taking a Lorna Shore song and try and learn it, and Ola learns. Would that be interesting? Give me suggestions in the comment section if you want to see me do Lorna Shore or any other band in Ola Learns. I mean, this is completely out of my league right here. And not really in my... This is not my forte. Let's just say this. But uh, maybe it could be my forte if I learn it. How about that? Incredibly brutal, obviously, Lorna Shore. And uh, one of the guitar players plays uh, solo guitar, so... That makes me really happy in my pants, just saying. He looks so cool with the solo guitar. The other guy also looks cool with, it, with his Ibanez, but you know, there's just something about solo guitars. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Maybe because it's solo guitar, so the, you know, the president. All right, Machine Gun Kelly. Yes, takes credit for reviving rock. Thank God. Thank God for Machine Gun Kelly, everyone. Holy shit. But uh, jokes aside, his debut album as a punk band, Tickets to My Downfall in 2020, has already sold over a million copies and was the first rock album in over a year to debut at number one on the Billboard. And yes, while that is nothing short but a success, reviving rock and roll... Just saying, be a little bit more humble maybe next time, uh, Machine Gun Kelly. Thank you. <laughs> Kelly also addressed his switch over to pop punk and the hate he got for it. I know it kills certain bands in that community that I got the success that I got, but I earned that shit. Dude, I was fracking loading up the van with our drums and amps in 2010, driving to Indiana and Chicago, uh, playing Warp Tour. I can tell you the friggin' Wi-Fi codes to venues in Blackfoot, Idaho. I don't get it. Does he know the Wi-Fi code for one venue in the US? I'm not completely sure how to read the statement. Anyways, Machine Gun Kelly, everyone. It's the guy who played, uh, was it uh, Tommy Lee in the, the Dirt, maybe, was it? I don't think I've ever heard a song of his, but you know, he was that guy in that movie once. Now, one of my favorite releases from last year, Based, has released a new single called Gargoyle, uh, featuring the vocalist Trevor of Black Dahlia Murder. Hello! I love Trevor, he's just amazing.
Oh, that's a beautiful intro, man. Okay, something has to happen right now, okay? Okay, nothing happened. There it is. This reminds me of an Elden Ring character right here. I stopped playing Elden Ring, by the way. I'm uh, 136 hours in, and uh, I'm done. I'm done. You know, what I really like about Beast, or Based, is that they... They're clearly death metal, but they have this really 90s groove to them that I... I really just f***ing love that. Even like a slight, slight hint of Bolt Thrower. I mean, what could go wrong? Really, really. Just such an awesome band. I can't wait to hear more from Based. Uh, I've been listening to this previous album way too much. It, I listened to it to death, basically. It's dead. That's a good thing, obviously. It's not dead as in being bad. It's just I've listened to it so much. Meshuggah streams raging new single, I Am That First. Uh, first. It's, it's a really hard word to say if you're Swedish. This album came out this past Friday. I've obviously, because I'm all English Swede, I've had it already for a couple days. It's really f***ing brutal as hell, I must say. It's my album tip of the week. It's a little bit of a more mature Meshuggah. I think that will be pretty accurate, uh, an accurate calling of what this album Immutable is. It's basically a very, very mature Meshuggah. I really hope that I'm getting one of the guys over for a coffee with Ola pretty soon because I want to talk, man. I want to talk about this. What about getting old? How do you stay so cool and make so cool music when you're old? That's a legit, you know, good question right there. So, new Mashuga guys, be excited. All right, a little guitar news. Stramberg teams at Ola Stramberg. We share the same name. Nobody asked. Stramberg teams up with Pliny for updated Prog NX6 and Necru Black signature guitars. The Prog Virtuoso. All new My Midnight Black Mall is joined by the natural, natural finished NX, which overhauls the spec sheets of Pliny's flagship signature. Look at that. I like this. Okay, here we go. Here, here's a picture. <gasps> oh, oh, that looks great. Looks really good. That's the natural one. Where's the black one? That also looks great. Shit. Oh, there's a playthrough. Let's check it out, okay? You know, obviously Pliny and his music is fantastic, but also. Whoever the guy is who films this stuff, I think he needs to get some kind of reward. Reward for just, you know, setting things up and making it look really beautiful. I mean, this right here... It's just, like, visual porn right here. I mean, look at the hair light right there, look, so you can see his arm hair. It's warm, it's nice, it really fits the music. Wesley Trot. My five-year-old autistic daughter is Pliny's biggest fan. Last summer, when I was driving her to daycare, I put on electric sunrise and she got very zen. As the summer went on, my non-verbal daughter started singing the guitar melodies on that song. No long after, I showed her the old album and she ate it up. If I tried to put something out, uh, something else on, like Grief she would throw a fit, screaming and crying until she got her Pliny. Holy shit, that's amazing. She has memorized nearly every melody on Handmade Cities. Pliny's new guitars, they look sick. Strandberg guitars, baby. Another piece of news, Gibson launches a considerably more affordable Adam Jones Les Paul standard. Now. When they launched the initial Les Pauls that were uh, like nine grand or something, and they also got stolen, by the way. A full palette of Gibson guitar, uh, Adam Jones guitars got stolen. Where did they end up? We have no idea. Probably in uh, another country somewhere. But for you guys that couldn't afford $6,000 or $9,000 worth of guitar, you can now get a hold of one for $2,900. Still made in the USA, a production model, obviously, that's gonna, you know, there, there's not gonna be a limited edition. Much like the new Dame Mustang guitar, that I think was about the same price, uh, the one that I bought, I think it's around the same price, $29,999. Uh, how many nines? Same specs, basically, but probably doesn't have, you know, the mirror on the back. Or does it? Let's check. No, it doesn't have the mirror, it has something else there, something toolish. Oh, here it is. Back in November 2020, an entire palette of 13 Adam Jones 79 List Pulse customs <laughs> worth 95 grand in total was stolen from Sweetwater Truck, prompting both Gibson and Sweetwater to request the help of the guitar community in assuring their safe return. The guitar community did not respond, <laughs> it seems, because we, had, we don't have an update on what happened. Anyways, they made new guitars, I think, and uh, people got happy. I just recently purchased my first Gibson guitar, the, uh, the Dave Mustaine guitar, and I just recently made a video too. I, I'm not sure if it's up yet. 
before this video or after, but uh, uh, I don't think I'm as much of an Adam Jones fan as I am maybe a Dave Mustaine fan, so I, I probably would not get this guitar right here. But for you people that like Tool, it's a done deal. Alright, so I saw a clip the other day where Dimebag is playing Gibson guitar. <gasps> That's almost sacrilege in a way, or is it? No, no one cares really. It's, it's just Dimebag playing an SG, and I thought it was pretty cool. I think it's the first time I've ever seen him with a Gibson guitar. That's not, you know, Sack Wild's guitar or anything. And obviously it's shredding. Because it's Dimebag, you know. Even though that looks cool, he wore that f***ing, you know, ML shape like a boss. He's... Dimebag is the ML guy. He doesn't look right with an SG, to be honest. He... he's... yeah. Just saying. But he's still shredding like a, you know, a legend. Very cool. First time I've seen Dimebag play a Gibson guitar and uh, a SG for that matter. <laughs> Question of the day! Thank you. I have a question from a member of mine, Sean Axe. Hola, hola, I saw Crowbar earlier tonight. Is this white-colored single pickup explorer with a fleur de lis on the 12th fret going to be available to buy as a signature guitar? I couldn't find anything online about it. Okay, you, uh... So, uh, obviously, Kirk is playing a solo guitar that, that looks like something you guys haven't seen before. And all I can say is that you have to be a little bit patient, you know, that uh, things don't go as quick as it did back before the pandemic. In general, things just take a little bit longer. So you just have to have a little patience, if that's okay with you guys. Uh, we are working with uh, Kirk, obviously, and uh, it's gonna be great. I'm really looking forward to the results. Obviously very proud about Kirk uh, being a solar artist. I mean, how cool is that? He's like the Rift Lord, you know? Question of the day. Alright, so the Sun with Fuller Rift Challenge, where you take the intro drums from the beginning of this video and make your own riffs. You can download the drums in the description of this video and make your own riffs, upload a video to YouTube, and I will check you out in the upcoming Swallow Contenders live stream in about a week on my second channel, okay? And this is a new thing. Before I did it in the Sun with Ola, but making the live streams, I can just check out way more contributions than uh, before, which is great, which means that more people get a chance to shoulder shit, basically. Uh, I just have to comment a little bit. I saw a Reddit post on the Son of Ola Rift Challenge because before we were using the Son of Ola Rift Challenge subreddit to find contributions quick. But for some, it became a little unfair with the subreddit. So I always thought that the YouTube algorithm worked a little better uh, in terms of finding different people for every time. So uh, I completely moved to just check the, the tag on YouTube, which is basically Swola and then the number directly, okay? Uh, I saw a post here. How are we all doing? So since this is an off week for Sunday with Ola, I just wonder if people still come here to check out the entries or if we all just search on tag on YouTube. Haikuna Matata is saying, I've lost interest since he went to the live stream for the Rift Challenge. I'd like more than three players a week, but when I watch the stream, the submissions feel like background noise while Ola shoots the breeze instead of being the primary subject of the video, okay. I'd rather have a Rift Challenge video every other week's rotating with Swola and Mel Morning or with FAQs. And it seems that like Ola just searching YouTube now instead of here. And yes, that, that's true. I am searching YouTube because, like I said before, I think it's a little bit more fair when using the YouTube algorithm rather than the subreddit. Uh, algorithm. And even though I understand where he's coming from and uh, he might have been a little frustrated of how it works, I still think that the current version and current model that I'm doing with the live streams, it, it, it's a chance for more people to get lifted every week. And the people that are genuinely interested in checking out contributions can go check that out and hang out. I, I, I like the live streams. So, you know, I think this is the future of Sunday with Ola Rift Challenge right there. You're just doing the live stream. So I understand your point in this, but uh, I, I don't necessarily agree with what you're saying. So hope that is okay. Uh, I, and I really hope that you might consider returning back to the Sunday with Ola Rift Challenge because uh, as it is right now, it's incredibly inspiring. Uh, I get to watch a lot of you guys and you guys are becoming better too at it, with, which is really awesome. A lot of you guys are upping your production as well. So it's... It's really cool, man. I really like the Sunday with Ola Rift Challenge. It really inspires me to write something new every week. So uh, I hope you change your mind and come back and make your Sunday with Ola Rift Challenge. Thank you. 
And that, my friends, was Sunday with Ola for today. I hope you have a great Sunday. If you want to support uh, what I'm doing and my channel, maybe consider getting a new Chug Life t-shirt in white, maybe. Uh, a cup or something like that. It's, yeah, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good way of just supporting uh, us direct here at Ola England Enterprises. <laughs> uh, guys, I hope you have a great Sunday. Thank you so much for watching and see you uh, tomorrow. Sunday with Ola, Contenders live stream on my second channel. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> that was a lame clap. There it is.